Back in 2018, Apos Games, developer of Kill Kill F, created a video game adaptation of an anime series that at the time I was super into. I still do really like it, but I was watching it for the first time at the time. The anime was Little Witch Academia. If you've listened to the Glitch Free Gaming podcast, you probably heard me talking excitedly about that game in the weeks running up to it coming out, and then not talking about it at all after it came out. And there's good reason for this, the game's just not that good. It's, it nails the art style of the series, it gets the voice actors for the series. They do a good job of making it feel like you're running around the school from Little Witch Academia, which for people who don't know, is kind of like an anime mix of like The Worst Witch and Harry Potter. It's really good. And it was kind of disappointing to have this game that it nailed that part of it, but then the core combat or the core like gameplay part of it was really going into these little dungeons and playing a side scroll and beat them up that wasn't very good and also didn't really fit the tone of the series that well. So when it was announced that A Plus Games' next game was going to be an adaptation of another Studio Trigger anime, this time Kill a Kill, I was a bit apprehensive about it because we've all been clamouring for a Kill a Kill game for a long time. It's been a running joke that people have wanted a Platinum Games developed Kill a Kill game for since the anime came out basically because it seems like a good fit. And when it was announced, it was announced under the name Arc System Works and kind of, you know, pushed the fact that A Plus Games was developing it into the, the background. So that was all slightly worrying. But thankfully, it was for not. The game is really good. <laughs> Kill Kill F is an arena fighter game in the style of games like Jump Force, Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi, the Naruto games, the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure game that came out two or three years ago. Uh, I think the most famous one was like a Gundam game that I think got some releases over here but was primarily really big in Japan. And it's a really popular style of fighting game, especially in Japan where you have full 3D movement so you can run around a little arena, hence the name Arena Fighters. And you can, you know, fight enemies kind of fighting game style. But most of them are a lot more shallow and easy to get into than regular fighting games are. Uh, not all of them, some of them are also stupidly complex. Kill the Kill manages to toe that line a bit where it feels closer to a traditional fighting game than most of these games do, but isn't overly complex so it is still really easy for everyone to kind of get into and just mash some buttons and stuff. The gist of the controls are you have a regular attack, like a melee attack, a ranged attack, and a guard break attack. And they all kind of do exactly what it sounds like. You can attack people, you can shoot things at them, and you can break their guard when they're guarding. It's not that complex. The thing that makes it interesting is that there are multiple characters that all have different takes on these things. So for example, Ryoko has a ranged attack that's a lot shorter than most of the other ranged attacks. Um, Nonon has melee attacks that are all ranged attacks, like all of her attacks are ranged attacks. Even her guard break is like this big laser that she charges up and it's actually way harder to hit than most of the other guard breaks, which is just an interesting twist on the character. Like most fighting games, you have a meter that builds up and once it's done you can do a special attack, but there's no like inputs for it, you just hold L1 and then press one of those types of attacks. Uh, if you press L1 and R1 together, you can either do a guard break if you're currently being attacked, or you kind of launch into this other mode that's this little kind of rock paper scissors mini game that is probably the weakest part of the game for me. I don't really like these kind of rock paper scissors things in these kind of games. I didn't like it in the Dragon Ball games, I don't really like it here. But the way it works is basically you can choose between uh, regaining health, regaining meter, or getting uh, an attack boost. If you successfully land one of these, you get the thing that you're trying to get, like an attack boost or health or whatever, and also you get an uh, increase in your overdrive meter. If you nail it perfectly, because there's three options basically, if the opponent loses it entirely, 
you get that boost and also the overdrive boost and also you get to go again and basically you just repeat this rock paper scissors thing again if the opponent matches what you're doing instead of beating it then you get the boost both the boosts but then it just stops and boots you out of that mode if your opponent beats it then you get nothing and you'll take a, damage, a bit of damage i think and it's fine it's not the most interesting mechanic in the game once you've got your overdrive up to three you can do a finisher attack that is like the insta kills from guilty gear where they're big and flashy and they're taken straight from the anime and they're really cool but you're not really going to see them that much in like competitive play i don't think um as someone who's nowhere near that level but even online i've not encountered people managing to get those out very much but maybe that's just the luck of the draw with the people I've played online so far. For me, as someone who is really bad at fighting games, it really pays off for me when a fighting game has a really good story mode or a bunch of single player content. It's the thing that makes me prefer like the Soul Calibur series over a lot of the other seri uh, series of fighting games. It's the reason that I like Smash Brothers Ultimate over Smash Brothers Wii U because the single player content in Wii U was never particularly good and then the stuff in Ultimate is fantastic. So thankfully it's great that Kill Kill manages to nail this. Kill Kill has this kind of in-depth story mode that is a side story, you know, kind of from the main Kill Kill series. Like a kind of, as the name would imply, it's a what if, that if you've played any other kind of anime games you'll kind of understand what that is. But basically it's what if this happened instead of this. And I'm not going to get spoilers for it because the story is actually unfortunately relatively short and I don't want to go hey, by the way, this happens because there's not that much of it there. I really like the story mode. Um, you unlock a second story mode once you finish the first one, and that's also really good. And it goes some places I was not expecting, and it is interestingly told and also matches the series in a really nice way. So I really like it. But don't go in expecting like this really long, in-depth story mode or anything. Um, there is thankfully a few other modes, there's like a survival mode where you have to fight against waves of enemies and stuff like that, there's um, a pretty in-depth practice mode and an okay tutorial, there's an online mode um, where you can do ranked or lobby play, the weird thing about all these modes is that they don't unlock until you make a certain amount of progress in the story, so when you first boot the game up if you want to just instantly go into practice mode, get used to the controls then jump online and do some one-on-one -on -one fights if that's how you do it. I know lots of people that that is how they play fighting games. This game specifically goes, no, you cannot do that. Get into the story mode and get a few chapters in before you unlock stuff. I don't know if it has some other thing where if you play a certain number of hours or something that unlocks the online, kind of like what Smash Brothers does for stuff, but the way I encountered it was I had to play through a certain amount of the story to even unlock the online. I didn't, I wasn't sure if there was online for a little bit there and was slightly worried about it. Thankfully the story mode is fun. If you're interested in anime already, it shows its cutscenes through 3D models, but similar to the, the little Witch Academia game that they made before and also kind of Arc System works recent anime games, it has this kind of filter over it and these kind of like models are designed in a way that makes them look not 2D because this is a 3D game, but closer to the anime at least, and they really almost nail the anime art style on this. My main issue is actually just that there's some real bad aliasing in parts of it that looks not great, and I feel like if it was a bit smoother, that would be the one thing that it would need to do to be like, hey, this looks a lot like an anime. And it looks great, the cutscenes are great, they're well animated, they bring in a lot of the animation quirks from the show, like uh, how Mako kind of just jumps around without really properly animating and just appears in random places 
that stuff's all in there. Like they, it's very clear that the people that made this game have watched a lot of the show and felt that they had to be very, you know, close to the show, and it is great. So at least the story mode's really good. That's the main thing I can say at least. Those other modes are fine. Like I, I don't really like survival modes that much. Like they're they're okay, but it's there if you want to play it. The one issue I actually have with this game that's kind of quite a major issue is just content. The story mode's not that long. It's really good when it's there, and I'm all for story modes not overstaying their welcome. So I, that's not a big complaint for me. But then the roster only has like six characters, uh, with a, two more coming as DLC, and there's variants for a couple of those characters. So really, it's closer. Those variants play very different. So it's closer to like you know seven or eight, or well, probably nine or ten. But <clears throat> it's not great. It's a really small amount of characters. Like they got the main characters there, like. Ryoko and Satsuki are there, and the Elite Four are there, but it's, it's Mako is coming as DLC, which makes sense because Mako is like one of you know the best characters in that show. But also, Kill Kill had a really wide range of enemies <laughs> throughout the show. Like for example, I would like to see the tennis club leader in this because I think that's one of the more iconic fights in the series. Um, but there's like a bunch of other characters that could have been in. Uh, the whole uh, Nudist Beach rebel group that... I'm not going to get into the plot of Kill Kill here, but they're a rebel group. They would have been nice to see, and I believe those are coming as DLC, but it's just... I feel like a lot of this should have been in the game at launch. Like, these aren't things that should be additional downloads afterwards, especially if they're charging for them, which I'm not 100% sure on, but... It feels like they should really have just nailed that part of it before launch. That said, like the rosters there is really good, and they do all play very differently from each other, so it is at least you know an interesting roster to play as. It's not like again the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure game or the J Stars games, where really every character plays the same except for special attacks. They have differences in their core competencies that is interesting. So do I recommend Kill a Kill F? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really good. Um, if you like the show, definitely. Like, without a doubt, buy it, play it. You'll like the story mode, the roster will be good enough for you, you'll love how it looks, you'll love how it sounds. Um, I didn't even mention, but it has like the dub voices in it as well, I believe. I didn't really use those at all, because I watched this with subs back in the day. I believe it has a demo, so you could actually just download it and give it a shot, and I really recommend that. It's getting a feel for it will kind of help, but it's interesting. I'm genuinely surprised by how good it is. I was not expecting to like this game as much as I did. For reference though, I played this on the PS4 Pro. Uh, it is also available on the Xbox One, the PC I believe, but also Switch, which I played the demo on Switch. And that version of it seems actually surprisingly good. Like it seems like they did a really good job at not just dumping the game on there and lowering the resolution like a lot of, I mean, that's really reductive, but like a, a lot of ports of current gen games to Switch. This game seems like it's got around that to some degree where they've done some additional tweaking in some places and maybe it just wasn't that performance heavy in the first place. And it seems to run pretty well on Switch. Again, only judging based on the demo, but it seems like it runs pretty well, which that would be a good place to pick this game up as well. So yeah, Kill a Kill F. I like it. I recommend trying it out, maybe picking it up if you're into these kind of games. And if A Plus Games is slowly just adapting every Studio Trigger anime into a game of some kind, it's only a matter of time till we get that sweet, sweet Inferno Cop game, right, guys? <laughs> If you like this video, please like, subscribe, you know, all that nonsense. Hit the things that are probably on screen just now so that you can view our other videos. We have some unboxings of stuff recently, some board game reviews, mostly Mario Maker. There's a lot of Mario Maker on. Oh my god, I've played so much Mario. 